Okay, awesome. We are live. I'm so excited. Um, welcome to our first episode of Everything GK. Um, we got many platforms here. So some of you guys are going to be watching us live. Many of you guys will watch the replay. I know some of you guys will be on Instagram, our Facebook page, um, YouTube live is streaming live there. Our Everything GK is brought to you by Olympic GK Academy. And again, our platform here is to uh, provide advice, support, solutions, and, and really guidance to the topics we're going to be discussing uh, on our podcast slash webcast. And uh, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to all team Olympic goalkeepers who did an amazing job um, in their fall season here uh, with, uh, with our club. Um, for those of you that are watching and you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. Uh, follow us on Instagram, our Facebook page, Everything GK Podcast is our title. Share it with goalkeepers, parents of goalkeepers, and uh, goalkeeper coaches, even soccer coaches as well. So um, topic for today is, um, is height important when it comes to college and the professional level for a goalkeeper? And, um, you know... I see and I know and heard of incredible goalkeepers that they quit on their dreams because they made the perception of others become their reality. And it's very sad and it saddens me. Um, and, uh, and before I dive into the topic, I want to touch on something and this could be a topic in itself. And we're definitely not going to scratch the, everything that has to deal with the height of a goalkeeper. Uh, but I, and again, our goal is to adv advise, support, and guide you know the goalkeepers uh, when scenarios like this happen. But um, uh, head coaches at the high school level, um, even at the uh, club level, maybe at the U13, U14 level, um, especially keepers as a freshman in the uh, in in high school, um, you know, I hear often from parents, you know, what do we do? You know, what do I say? How do I respond? Um, to the head coaches who continue to use the term, you're too short, okay? And um, uh, again, that's a topic in itself. Um, you know, when I hear that, I, I, I say to myself, there's no leadership skills there. There's no people skills there from the coach, especially when you're a freshman, okay? You're a freshman. It, physiologically, you may have not gotten tall yet. That's nobody's fault. That doesn't mean we stop developing you. That doesn't mean we stop putting you in game-like scenarios. And I'm speaking to the coaches right now. Um, and um, it's just a shame when I hear that. It, it puts down the goalkeepers mentally. And this is the this is a time where they got to mentally be strong about their position and progress into that that starting that starting role. So, um, uh, so if you ask the person who says, you know, uh, does is goalkeeper height important in college and at the pro level? Um, and when I hear the word, yes, it is, um, I like to ask why, why is it important? And I want to know the evidence, the substance, their mentality, their, their, their reasoning behind that decision that they're making and, and to support the answer, you know, um, because most of the time for what, what I understand, see, hear, and experience is, um, it's an adopted belief that has no real explanation. Okay. Um, it's an adopted answer. It's a belief that they adopted because why, um, they see it at the premier league. They're six, four, six, five, six, six goalkeepers. Um, uh, they see it in the professional uh, 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 level, whether it's the MLS or Bundesliga, and they see the highest levels for the most part are tall goalkeepers. So they start buying this belief that you need a tall goalkeeper in order for you to win championships. And, um, um, and um, most of the people just buy into that belief without no substance behind it because it's just easier to do that. Um, the height is only as important as the execution that is needed to win the starting role as the number one goalkeeper. Okay, I'm going to say this again. 
The height of a goalkeeper is important, only as important as the execution that is needed to win the starting role. Whether it's foot distribution, whether it is uh, in the air, crosses, winning the balls out of the air, 1v1s, um, uh, being able to stop shots on their far post, upper 90. Um, it's all about executing. If you can execute and you win in the execution, height shouldn't really be a big deciding factor, um, especially in the high school and in the collegiate. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk also about the professional level because I have a very uh, special guest that um, I couldn't think of any other one than the person that I'm going to be bringing on um, to talk about this at the professional level. OK, so period. End of story. If you can execute, you have a, a, an opportunity to play at the collegiate also at the professional level. OK, so a lot of people just make that decision based on, you know, visual and, and adopted belief that taller is better, better. But if you challenge them, they don't really have um, a reason. And maybe the, the number one thing that we'll hear is they cover more ground. Um, I don't really know what that means um, when it relates to, again, the functionality of being a goalkeeper um, when you're just preventing balls from going in the net. OK, so, you know, I like to say that, you know, you compare uh, you compare, let's say, a 5'10 goalkeeper with a 6'3 goalkeeper. OK, they're both similar in execution. Um, they're beasts coming out of their, uh, out of their line. They time the ball well, um, in their box on breakaways. They time it in the air. Well, they're both beating the six, three, uh, striker in the air. Um, they're communicating extremely well. They can play out of the backfield, all the stuff that we're looking for in a, in a goalkeeper, right. In execution. And the reality is, um, and, and I don't mean this in a negative way. There is ignorance from head coaches when it comes to the goalkeeper position. I don't know how else to explain this. Um, they're, uh, they're just ignorant to them just picking a 6-3 goalkeeper. And why is that? Because, again, the adopted belief out of the two, they're both the same. I'm going to go with the taller goalkeeper. Um, and if you ask them, to dig down deep based on that decision, they really can't give you besides that I believe the 6'3 goalkeeper is going to give us a better opportunity. Why? Why? I want to know why. I want the explanation as to why. Because if I take a look at a 5'10 goalkeeper and a 6'3 goalkeeper, and they're both executing exactly the same, I would pick the 5'10 goalkeeper, and I'll tell you why. Because... Um, in order for them to do what a 6'3 goalkeeper do, that tells me they're more athletic. That tells me they've extended their boundaries and, and the execution versus the person who's doing who's at a six is, is at six three. Okay. The athleticism of a 5'10 to do what a 6'3 does tells me um they're 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 a better athlete. Um, and again, I'm not taking away from six three and taller goalkeepers. This this topic just happens to be talking about the perception of goalkeepers under six feet tall. Um, and I think those that are six, three or six, four should understand the mentality of a five, 10, five, 11 goalkeeper, because those are the goalkeepers you're going to go up against in trials, go up against at ID camps, going to go up against at the preseason before your coach is making, making that decision. So, um, and, and again, this is all about how do we guide and advise um, these keepers that are going to quit because that's what they keep hearing um, that has no substance behind it. And I really like to see this change. And we're going to talk about this. Um, and uh, and again, listen, you got to execute, uh, period. Just because you're an athlete as a 5'10", 5'11", six-foot goalkeeper, um, but you're not executing. And the word that I would put in after execution is consistent. See, consistency of execution. You've got to consistently execute at the high level better than the next goalkeeper, whether they're 6'5", 6 6'4", 5, 6 5, 5, it doesn't matter. It's the consistent execution of all the things required for you to become the number one goalkeeper.
So what do we need to do to give the goalkeepers that are under six feet tall the opportunity to continue to follow their dreams, playing at the college, a collegiate level, playing at the pro level, and also to help the, changing the belief that taller goalkeepers doesn't automatically make them the choice in the eyes of, again, a lot of the head coaches that make those decisions. So I'm just going to share, again, for me, again, we're going to just scratch the surface here. This could be a three, four hour um, podcast. But really, for me, the three things that I think uh, can change the landscape, the decision making, the perception, okay, is we need more goalkeeper coaches to become head coaches, okay, at the at the at the collegiate level, at the high school level, um, even at the pro level, okay. We we need that. <laughs> And that's how we're going to start changing that landscape of who gets picked. The best goalkeeper should get picked, okay? Um, I also believe that head coach, they need to take some type, and I don't even know if it's being offered, to be honest with you, and, and hopefully Olympic GK Academy is working on some things on, on making this a reality, but um, they need to take some type of, goalkeeping certification course and understanding not just the position of goalkeeping but the psychology of goalkeeping and uh it's a very misunderstood position um and um that only the goalkeeper coach not every goalkeeper coach because that's also misunderstood by a lot of goalkeeper coaches as well too but the goalkeeper coach that focuses on the development of the goalkeeper, on the mentality of the goalkeeper, on what it takes to take it to the next level. And not every goalkeeper coach um, has that gift. Um, but we need more of the head coaches to understand not just the position, but the psychology of the goalkeeper, because I think that would also change the landscape. And again, uh, educating with data, not adopted uh, just adopted uh, philosophies or an adopted belief because it just got transferred over to somebody else who said that, and now that becomes a belief. But educating, okay, the public, the coaches, the parents, the players with data, okay, from training and from games, right? Um, and also the future head coaches that are looking to become coaches in the high school, uh, club coaching. Uh, collegiate coaching, or even at the pro level, um, uh, they need to start collecting data from goalkeepers in general um, and and say, hey, look at the data. Let's make decisions based on the data. You do that with other aspects of your training. Why is there an issue when it comes down to selecting a goalkeeper? And again, it, it, and again, I, I, I want this podcast to be the voice of these things, okay? Again, if you're 6'4", and you're executing consistently, dominating, guess what? You're the starting goalkeeper. If the data that I receive in your training, the communication I have with your goalkeeper coach, tells me that you should be the number one goalkeeper, fantastic, you're the one goalkeeper. I don't care if, if you're 5'10", if you're 5'9", if you're 6'1", or you're seven two. Um, let the data provide the decision making um, for that starting goalkeeping. Okay, so um, you can tell I'm getting passionate about this because again, I see so many great goalkeepers and coaches that develop goalkeepers that are upset with with goalkeepers that decide to quit, and they're not upset at the goalkeeper; they're upset at the landscape of of the perception of others and maybe parents and maybe um, the coaches from the collegiate. I, I just got a phone call yesterday. I did an interview yesterday of a transfer, uh, a goalkeeper that is looking to transfer. Fantastic goalkeeper. And uh, the reason why I asked, what do you think the belief level is in you playing at the, at the professional level? He tells me an A and I said, why isn't it not a 10? If it's not a 10, we can't go anywhere. And the first thing he said is because of my height. I don't think it's an issue for me, but I know that the perception of many will make it an issue for me. 
And we got to change that. It's it's wrong. It's terrible. There's no data behind that. Um, and so, again, um, and I would interview, really, when you get to the collegiate level, you know how we say we, you know, they interview us and you go visit the school and you do their ID camps. And we're going to do episodes strictly on each of those topics as well. Um, I'm a big believer that the goalkeepers got to interview the head coach with many questions. Um, but the two questions that I would really incorporate is, number one, I, I hope you have a goalkeeper training program at, your, at the collegiate level. Not all do. Okay. So uh, with that in mind, you want to ask who makes the decision on the starting goalkeeper? Is it the goalkeeper coach? Is it the head coach? Okay. And some will say goalkeeper coach, or in reality, it's going to be them. Um, but again, you're just telling them to give you the data. You're just, you're collecting data, right? And the other question would be, is height factor, it does height factor your decision for the starting goalkeeper? That tells you right then and there, is that a college you even want to progress further? Okay. Especially if you're under six feet. Does a height factor into your decision to to a starting goalkeeper? Just collect data. Well, how are they going to respond to that? Okay. And and I think questions like that have to be answered so you don't put yourself in a situation where, you know, you think one thing, but the other thing happens, especially when you're investing tens of thousands of dollars per year at a university. Okay. Most who do not understand the complete performance of the goalkeeper. They're going to pick the taller goalkeeper, right? My question is why? Why is that? I want, I want to know. What's the substance behind that, okay? All right. Before I bring in our very special guest, uh, who I'm very excited uh, to bring on here, um, we're going to do a quick sponsor break, okay? Accidents and injuries are going to happen, whether it's an ankle sprain, a concussion, a contusion to the ribs. We are faced with a trip to the emergency room. We're faced with a trip to urgent care. And the first thing that happens with, with the mindset of parents and what they have to wrestle with is what? High deductibles, co-pays, and based on your health insurance, right? So don't let a hospital visit um, affect you know, your wallet. And, and not many people are aware of the specific coverages that are available to, to cover accidents and emergency visits that can eliminate the high deductibles, okay? As we all know, we all have insurance with high deductible. Why? Because we want to bring the cost down. Um, and high out-of-pocket expenses. You're going to be shocked how affordable this coverage is. Um, get the right protection for your goalkeeper. I actually have it for my son, and I actually used it for a hospital, a hospital injury. And thank God that I did. Um, so call top agent in North America who's actually a very good friend of mine, uh, Eric Wilson at iCell Health Incorporated. Uh, you can contact Eric at iCellHealth.com. Phone number is 888-449-5370. The customer service you're going to get from Eric is totally unmatched. I would put my name behind that. Uh, and so um, let's get going with our very special guest. I'm excited about this. You know, uh, Todd is, Todd Hoffer is the first person I thought of and I have a very big network and, and the reason why, um, I, I wanted to bring Todd on board is, um, uh, let me, let me bring him on here on the, on the stream. I wanted to bring, um, uh, Todd on board is number one. He's a great person. Okay. Number two, uh, let me see if I can bring you on Instagram here. Uh, yes. Hold on, guys. Sorry. I'm accepting you. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So we'll bring you also on Instagram. Hopefully, uh, you should be popping in soon. Um, is, number one, he's a fantastic person. Uh, he's an excellent, excellent coach. Um, I'm going to actually turn the Instagram off only because there's an echo. So sorry, guys. If you're on Instagram, go ahead and join us either on our YouTube channel or join us on our Facebook page. Awesome. Let me turn this off, guys. Okay. And we'll fix that. We'll fix that for future episodes. Um, and, um, you know, uh, Todd Hofford has coached at the collegiate level um, as well as being the goalkeeper coach for many seasons with uh, Real Salt Lake. 
uh, in the MLS and was a goalkeeper coach for the U.S. youth girls national teams. Um, uh, he hosts camps and mentorship program for goalkeepers nationwide. We're going to we're going to have Todd share that um, at the end of the uh, episode. Um, and uh, I wanted Todd to come to our first episode here today because uh, he was able to experience this exact topic at the professional level um, with Real Salt Lake, um, as well as the New York Red Bulls, um, uh, perhaps the two best goalkeepers in the history of MLS. And they happen to be under six feet tall, <laughs> right? So... Todd, welcome. Thank you so much for, you know, uh, you know, being part of our first episode here. I'm excited that you're on here. So welcome on board. Well, first and foremost, thank you very much. I mean, it's an honor to be the, the first guest. Uh, it's obviously a, a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. And I've, uh, uh, I guess I could say I'm very fortunate to have that ex those experiences. Uh, but yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, I think what you're doing is great. And it's a great learning tool for, for a lot of people that are out there, including myself. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's get right to it because I know, gosh, there's so many questions. And uh, uh, but from your experience and, and again, I, I also wanted to bring somebody that was, was coaching at the highest level um, here in the United States, because it's important to get the feedback from people that have experienced it rather than an opinion of, you know, someone like, you know, someone like me. So um, why do you feel through your experience um, at the collegiate level as well at the professional level, why do you feel head coaches always go with taller goalkeepers? Is it ignorance? Is it a sense of insecurity based on a false belief? Um, why do you feel that that is something that is just automatic with some of the coaches at the collegiate level, also at the pro level? I think a lot of it has to do with just perception of what they feel is, is primarily important. You know, and, and the higher levels of the game you go to, one of the big differences is always going to be the dealing with a cross, you know, and that perception is, well, if you're if you're too short, you're not going to be able to deal with those situations appropriately. Or if you're too short, you're not going to have the range, you know, to cover the goal as much. Uh, in, in my experience, that's been the, the basic core perception of a lot of people um, and, and not not just head coaches, just I think soccer fans in general, that's kind of the perception. And especially those people that are non-goalkeepers, you know, and I've been very fortunate to work with, you know, some, I hate to use the, the term short, but smaller statured goalkeepers, not those six, four, six, five frames that everybody wants and dreams about, um, but they still get the job done. Uh, and and in my, my opinion, as long as you can get the job done, I don't care if you're five foot five or six foot five. You know, if you're five foot five, you've got some limitations, potentially. If you're six foot five, you also have some limitations. So we've got to try to figure out, OK, well, which one of those is going to be able to cover the most cover most ground, have the best range, um, deal with situations the, in whatever situation they, they, they are in and make good sound decisions. And at the higher levels, that's what it's really all about. Uh, and if you're able to deal with with the cross and you're able to cover your goal and and do everything that a six foot five goalkeeper can do, who, who's to say you're you're worse just because you're you're smaller? Uh, you know, that's I've never true. understood it. Yeah, it's so true. You know, if I take a look at going into another sport, if you take a look at like a Michael Jordan, who, you know, slam dunk on, you know, six, eight and six, nine and six, ten centers, uh, the perception of people would say, well, then Michael Jordan can't slam dunk on these seven, eight, seven foot, you know, centers. Well, that's not true. <laughs> you know, so going back into the crosses and going back into be able to get up uh, before the strikers. And it's all about obviously timing uh, and positioning yourself. You know, you happen to uh, coach uh, some of the most dynamic goalkeepers, actually, that the MLS have ever had. Um, and, and uh, amazing long-term careers um, that have made a big impact, you know, for their teams. And, and that's, you know, uh, coaching Nick Romando and, and Luis Robles. Um, let me ask you this. Was there any concern when uh, the head coach of these teams, were there concerns or talks that, hey, 
you know, do we worry about, you know, starting Nick or do we worry about starting Ruiz uh, because of their height? Was there any talk uh, about that or concerns? While I was within those clubs, never once, okay. never once. Uh, and I think a lot of that stems from, yes, were they six, were they six foot five? No, they weren't six foot five. They weren't these big monster goalkeepers that everybody dreams about, but they had their limitations. Both of them understood their limitations and they excelled so much in other areas that they made up for that lack of height. So for example, uh, Nikki, I mean, Nikki was very, very explosive, you know, and he in so quick and his hands were just, I mean, there was oftentimes I couldn't hit it hard enough for him, hmm. you know, that he, cause he caught everything. Uh, he was that kind of old school, goalkeeper um yeah. but what's nicky really known for it's his distribution his distribution ball out of his hands off the floor doesn't matter was so off the charts for a goalkeeper in especially in this league in mls that you you wanted him regardless of his lack of height you wanted him in goal you needed him in goal because he brought the other qualities were so high that it didn't really work. Okay, maybe we might miss a cross or something like that from time to time. But I tell you what, you know, Nicky, uh, if you, and I'm sure if, if we had him on, he'd probably agree. From If you take him from early on in his career towards the end of his career, he was so much better on the cross than I think he was ever given credit for. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that was because of his timing, his decision making. He knew his limitations, he understood them, and he didn't try to go beyond them and try to come for crosses that he knew he probably shouldn't be. Early on in his career, I think he did that, you know, I don't want to say often, but he did it more so than he did at the end of his career. You know, you look at somebody like Luis, um, Luis was just so powerful. Different, very similar to Nicky, but a different realm. I mean, there was often times where I'd hit a ball on Luis that I'm like, that's going in, that's going in, that's getting around him. And next thing you know, he was so explosive that he was propelling himself and was getting a hand to it and pushing it wide. Where I'm, I'm, I would argue, I'm not sure if many six foot three, six foot four, six foot five goalkeepers are going to have that power and explosiveness. Yeah. Uh, one, because they don't need it, because right. they have some of that range. So, but still, I want to say they wouldn't need it. They're probably going to need it, but they don't feel they need it because, oh, I'm six foot four, I'm six foot five, I can cover the goal. Right. Well, just because you're tall doesn't mean you, you also need to be explosive. Right. Uh, so I, I, I'm one of those that I, I'm not a big believer in height. Uh, you know, I've had many, many arguments with different and discussions uh, over the years about it. Uh, and I, and I think I always will, I'll always fight and I'm six foot three. I should be the guy that's probably rooting for the taller goalkeeper. Uh, but I, I don't see the point in it. As long as you're lack, you're, you're making up in one realm for your lack of height. Um, you know, and I look at another goalkeeper that we all know that played in the MLS, John Bush. Yeah. I mean, John Bush is probably, well, I know he is, he's smaller than both of them. Yep. And John Bush played for the national team. So did Nikki. So yep. did Luis. All three of them played, represented our national team, you know, and I don't know how many caps they have between them, but it's, but it's a good number. Yep. And what made John so great is his timing and his reading of the game and his, his positioning of his back four, his communication, you know, and it, that, it, that to me is, is critical. I mean, I, I, I look at goalkeeping, I break it up into three phases. Before the save, the save, and after the save. Mm -hmm. And what does everybody think is the most important thing? Oh, the save. No, yeah. the save is not the – that's the easy part. The difficults are the bookends, phase yeah. one and phase three. Yeah. So, And the better you are in phase one and phase three, the less saves you actually have to make. It's true. You know, and, uh, you know somebody like Nick, Luis, John Bush – they understand that so well that they don't want to be forced to make so many saves. So they're making sure that they're always in the right spots. They're always at the right angle. They're always reading the game. They're communicating. And so those decisions are a lot easier for them based on all these other elements. So uh, that, that to me is critical. 
Uh, and I think if you are going to be smaller, you just have to make up for it in all those different elements. You, your, your phase one and phase threes have to be super, super good and make that a super strength. You know, I'm glad you, you shared that because, again, uh, we, 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 we share this to, again, uh, educate and be a resource for parents and goalkeepers, you know, who, um, again, they, they need to hear this knowing that, yes, at the pro level, there are coaches out there that say, hey, whoever executes the best is the ones who's going to start because they may not have that experience with their head coaches at the collegiate level. So they quit. So, you know, I have coached for many, many years um, from youth all the way up to prepping uh, goalkeepers for pro trials and, and, and stuff and in camps and residential camps and, and all that stuff. And um, it, it's amazing how if I were to, to, to take all the goalkeepers and we've had some just incredible goalkeepers that from six, four, all the way to five, nine um, um, from the high school level and, and up. And if I had to compare it, I, I would really, really, I was excited about those 5'10 to 6'6'1 goalkeepers because they just wanted it a little bit more because they knew that they were being looked at because of their height. And so there's a little bit more fire that's in their belly. There's a little bit more in wanting more repetitions. There's a little bit more in, in, in just, just the desire. But then you see that fall off at the collegiate level because we have a lot of head coaches, that, again, that don't have that, that – that, um, that perception with the substance behind it. So they, they adopt that belief that, okay, I'm just going to go with the taller goalkeeper. Right. So this is why it's so important that when you are looking for to play at the collegiate, you're looking to transfer to another uh, college. Um, you need to know that the person who's making the decision uh, is not prejudging. I won't say the word prejudice, but that's what it is, but they're prejudging. Right the um the position based on just the height in it in itself but they need a goalkeeper so we'll just bring them because we do need to have a second or third and you're looking to become that number one yes we know you need all that other stuff that you have to execute we know that right but you need to know that height is not going to be a hindrance in the decision making of that head coach and i think that's very very important otherwise you're going to see a lot of these stellar goalkeepers that could be playing at the professional level that are going to quit just before that, because they now adopted that belief based on somebody else's belief as well. And so I'm glad that you shared that. So what do you think, you know, I, I kind of shared earlier, you know, three things that I, you know, I think needs to happen in, for that education, but how do we change the landscape to get people to understand that, you know, don't look at height of a goalkeeper in regards to whether they can make it at the professional level or not. What needs to happen for that? I think the biggest thing is education. You know, it's, it's education of the position, you know, and it's like, it's like a lot of things in life. If, if we're not comfortable with something, we don't know a lot about something. What do we typically do? We typically push it off to the side. We ignore it. We, uh, and, and don't want to deal with it. And that's natural. That's that's just human nature. And it's kind of the same sort of thing with with goalkeeping. A lot of people don't really know a lot about it. They don't really interested in it. So what do they do? They turn their head, they ignore it. But yet everybody has their opinions on it. Everybody has yeah. their perceptions on it. So I think we need to, you know, number one, just educate everybody of of what is the makeup of a goalkeeper? You know, what are the elements of a goalkeeper? You know, and, and there's a lot of different elements that make make up a goalkeeper. Height is just one. That's just one element. You know, it's the same as catching a ball. You know, do you have good hands? That's one element. You know, your footwork, that's one element. You know, and I and I look at it as, okay, well, let's, there's a lot more than 10 elements, but let's say there's 10 elements that make up a, a quality goalkeeper. You're never going to make your decision on the starting goalkeeper off of one, right? I oh, hope not. Always, he's always, <laughs> he's tall. He's tall. He's a good goalkeeper. Well, in the same retrospect, you would never make your, your decision off of, oh, he's got great hands. But that's it. That's the only element they have. Yes. So you've got to put all the elements together and try to think, okay, well, which one of these goalkeepers has the majority of the elements and is good and has quality and brings that quality out? 
So that's what I think we've got to do the most education and, and, and educating what those elements that really are the true makeup of what a quality goalkeeper really is and what's their job duty and what is the expectation. You know, most people think their number one job, which at the end of the day it is, it's keeping the ball in the back of the net. That's mm -hmm. being a shot stopper. Yeah. But again, that's one element. All right. Because I, I mentioned before that phase one, phase two, phase three, the shot stopper is actually phase two. Yep. The ability to deal with the shot. I, I get a lot of, you know, parents that will come up to you. It's like, oh, my Johnny or my Sarah, they made 20, 30 saves a game. And I usually look at them and go, well, they're probably not a very good goalkeeper. And they look at me like, well, what do you mean? Well, they might be a very good shot stopper. Right. But they're not necessarily a good goalkeeper. Right. All right? And there's a difference. That's just one element of being a quality goalkeeper. So I think we really have to educate people of what those different and variety of elements that are the true makeup of what the goalkeeper really is and what they do. That's so true. And I, and I think we need to stop. Uh, and, it, and it happens, you know, at the uh, high school conferences, as well as the collegiate is, you know, we, we, we're rewarding goalkeepers who, you know, um, you know, have clean sheets or, you know, they've made, um, I don't know, uh, their go goals against, which plays a significant role with their defense, their, their entire team. You haven't touched the ball, you know, uh, for two games. And you won the defensive player of the week. Like, how, how, you know, so you start rewarding things. And then that becomes an adopted belief for, you know, well, what do we need to look for? We need to look at people that just have zero goals go against. That's who I want. I want you, I want a goalkeeper that has the least goals against. Well, you know, you put that goalkeeper at a, at a team that maybe doesn't have a strong defense. And lo and behold, wow, the goal against average is totally different. So you're spot on in regards to the elements and looking at all the elements. And I really, truly believe the education um, is going to come by getting more goalkeeper coaches becoming head coaches of the game, where then we can also take a look at data, of these collegiate goalkeepers and these MLS goalkeepers over a period of, you know, eight, eight to 10 years and say, yeah, you know, uh, a five ten is doing just what a six three is doing in stats. Maybe even better. Maybe a little bit lower, but they're they're there. It's not the height. It's one element, but it's not the complete picture and the decision making of of coaches. Um, and and I really want these youth goalkeepers to understand that, uh, especially the freshmen in high school who get rid of oh, you know you're you're only you know only five four. Well, you know what? Um, yeah, it's not your fault right now. I mean, let's see what happens by the end of your sophomore year. But at that point, what can we do to, to, to have you execute at a highest level to your capabilities, right? If, if you can't touch the goalpost, it's not your fault right now. But at one point, if you stay at a 5'7", you know, height and you can't touch that goal post, can we, can, we, can we help you do that? We can. But if you can't, yeah, then there's an element that's not going to be part of your, your strength. And that could be a deciding factor. Um, but coaches go out there and say, you're too short, or we can't put you in because we don't want a ball to go over your head at an eighth grade or a freshman. You're just taking them away from developing as a goalkeeper that wind up maybe becoming your best goalkeeper junior or senior year. And, and that's just heartbreaking, you know, to hear that from parents, you know, what do we say to that? And I say, you know, that the person who's making the decision is telling you that you just got to find a way to cope and realize that that comes from ignorance. And um, um, and lack of people skills, you know, uh, how to communicate with that goalkeeper. Letting it There's so many different ways you can actually say what you want to say without saying, well, you're too short. That doesn't that doesn't make sense. So um, awesome. Um, I know we have um, many questions um, that I'm going to pick. So those of you that are listening right now, send us your um your questions on everything GK podcast at gmail.com. And um, what we'll do is we'll take two or three questions and we're going to answer them um, at the end of the, towards the end of the podcast, which we're coming down towards the last 20 minutes of the, uh, of the podcast here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll, 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 we'll ask uh, Todd. We'll, uh, I'll give you my opinion as well. It's how to address some of these questions that we have. Um, but um, um, before we do that, I got one more sponsor break. 
Um, I'm excited about this one as well. I know this person uh, uh, personally. I work with him as well. Um, is your goalkeeper ready for pro trials or needs an agent to be represented properly with the right pro opportunities? Sueños Sports is an international sports agency based out of Chicago, focusing on proper representation of professional soccer players. Run by owner and agent Santiago Garcia, Sueño Sports takes a comprehensive approach to understanding players on and off the field to help them find the best environment for their success. They work with clubs in the MLS, USL, NISA, with established connections and success throughout Europe. Clubs like Bayern Munich, Sporting Lisbon, and Rio Oviedo. Santiago hosts many identifications camps here in Chicago. There's one that's coming up here at the end of uh, December. Um, and soon nationwide to identify players to represent and offer pro trials to Europe, South America, as well as here in the United States. So if you'd like to learn more, please visit sueñosports.com. You can also contact Santiago at 630-272-0730. Now, I'm going to do a plug in because you also talked about explosiveness for the shorter goalkeepers um, and, you know, uh, uh, which I'm a big believer as well, too. What you make up in your height, you execute even more in the other elements of your goalkeeping. And I designed a program that I, I just think more, more people should be promoting it because we have a 100% results. For those of you that maybe are hearing me for the first time, I was, I'm was i actually an athletic trainer by trade, uh, specializing in biomechanics and, and um, uh, speed and conditioning. Uh, I used to work with um, Chicago Bulls as well, well as the Northwestern um, Wildcat football team when the Rose Bowl back in 1995. And, and really, um, um, everything that I put together is calculated to enhance um, uh, vertical jump as well as explosiveness. And to date, we ha still have a 100% result. It's a two-week program. And for those of you that you're ending, most of the people here in the United States are ending their season, their fall season. Uh, there's a little bit of downtime. It's the best time to actually uh, apply the two-week uh, program. You can definitely go on olympicgkacademy.com, click on the Increase Your Vertical Jump program. Uh, the cost is nothing compared to hiring a personal trainer. Or, uh, it's designed by me. It's designed and it's calculated. And uh, we've had as much as over one foot increase after a two week, uh, the two-week program. So um, definitely check that out. Um, especially, and this is, this is great for those six foot eight goalkeepers. <laughs> they also want to increase their jump as well and their explosiveness. So check that out. Um, so Todd, are you okay to hang out here for the next uh, 15 minutes? We, we're going to have some questions I'm going to pull up, um, that we've gotten emailed and then you can also help me answer some of these questions. Um, Absolutely. all right. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. So here's question number one. We'll, we'll keep away the names of the people, but um, I know this, uh, uh, hopefully this person is watching, but I know they're going to watch if it's the replay. And by the way, guys, if you guys are watching the replay, just hit replay, okay? Um, hit replay. So, And then the state that you're actually um, watching from, we just want to start collecting data, right? Um, and uh, um, if this is valuable, definitely share this out, tag people, um, and uh, feel free to send us your concerns or questions that you have so we can answer them here uh, on the podcast. Now, this podcast will be a weekly podcast starting in 2022, um, but uh, uh, we'll probably get maybe one or two more episodes uh, in November and December before we started on a weekly basis. So um, again, we're excited about what we're bringing here. Todd, again, I'm just excited that you're on here. Um, we also have some people that I know that are thankful for just this topic alone, because this does address a lot of the concerns that a lot of parents and goalkeepers have um, with the topic that we have. So let's go with question number one. Um, and here was the email. Would love to hear your opinion on the goalkeeper must play short or out of the back at all costs. That is popular in most clubs right now. My son is not allowed to punt the ball. I think he has punted once in eight games this fall. So what's your opinion on that, Todd? Uh, well, it's a great question, you know, and uh, it's one of those that it's it's a big hot topic, you know, right now. Everybody wants to play like Barcelona, Real Madrid, and that's great. At the end of the day, what's our number one job? 
our number one job is to keep the ball in the net in whatever means possible. If we have the ability to also play with our feet and build in the attack, awesome, great. Uh, I had a conversation with actually one of uh, the goalkeepers that's actually in my virtual program a couple of weeks ago, and he's like, I'm not, I'm not allowed to take any goal kicks. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, we have to build all the time. I'm like, well, that's great. I said, but shouldn't you have a lot of other tools in your toolbox? Because right now, because he struggles striking a ball long. I'm like, you want as many tools on your toolbox as possible. Do you want to have the ability to play out of the back and build from the back? Yes. Play short, play long, play those little layered, you know, balls into the outside backs, play long balls in behind. If you're only ever playing out of the back short, what if you need to have that ability to play long sometime? Or now it's at the end of the game and you need to have a big, long ball at the end, you know, to kill off some, some clock. You need as many tools as you possibly can. So, yes, I understand we want to build it, but it's also a little bit detrimental if that's all you're doing is building. It's just as detrimental, in my opinion, if you're doing the exact reverse and all you're doing is playing long balls all the time and you're not building. You, you need to have a little bit of that kind of give and play to get more of that well-rounded goalkeeper. So I'm a, uh, I put it this way. I'd rather have a goalkeeper that's decent with their feet, but very, very good as a goalkeeper. All right. Then somebody that is phenomenal with their feet and can do all the tricks and do all that kind of stuff. But, Oh, I'm kind of biting my nails when somebody aims to shoot the ball on goal. A hundred percent. I'm spot on with you. You know, when I hear when I hear this, you know, I, I may just do an episode strictly on this because this is all goes based on ego, um, ignorance, because in order to play out of the backfield, it's not just the goalkeeper. Every parts have to move in unison for that to even work. Now, I understand you practice it right and you try to and you want to. OK, but we're talking about to get to the offensive third. We're talking about at least 70 yards of advancement right? In order for us to have opportunities to create chances to score. And so when, when I see goal kicks being taken, where you move up your defenders, you're not playing it out of the back. What's the difference between that and doing a punt? If you really look, so if you're allowing your goal kicker to send long goal kicks, why is the punt an issue? You're still looking at a 50, 50 ball technically, right? OK, so I, I just think it's the it's like it's like coaches who have a formation, regardless of the players they are just going to they're just going to jam that formation is because that's all they know. Right. It's the same thing playing out of the back. They're just going to force playing out of the back. And then when it doesn't work, they're going to yell at these players. Right. Including the goalkeeper, because it's not the goalkeeper that makes always the error. Right. It's not. It's 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 maybe the number two. It's the five. Maybe it's oh, I don't know. Maybe the holding the number six comes in and their technical was bad. Right. And then they blame the goalkeeper for sending it to number six. So that, that has really nothing to do with the goalkeeper. But if, like you said, and I use this a lot in my training, we're trying to add more tools to your toolbox. So when you're ready to construct or create your decision-making, you can decide which is the best tool at that situation. And so um, if you can play with your feet, that's great. That doesn't mean that the team should be playing out of the bat, even if you have a phenomenal goalkeeper with their feet. Why? Because that takes more than one or two players to be able to play out of the bat. So. Well, and, and you also get into situations where if all you're ever doing is building from the back, you become very, very predictable. Yep. Very predictable. Yep. Yeah. And you're very easy to start to defend those situations. So the old scenario that I was brought up on, and I'm sure there's a lot of other people, you know, out there is you play long, play long to have the ability to play short. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you start playing balls long and in behind, what's the defense start to do? They start to drop off. Well, now you have the ability to play short. Right. You do the same thing. You play short because then what's the defense start to do? They start to creep up, boom, that's when you hit the ball in behind. If all you're ever doing is playing short, playing short, playing short, you're very, very predictable. Right. Right. You want to, you want to constantly have that unpredictability in, in your play. So you play short to play long, you play long to play short. So what's the advice? What do we tell, you know, what do we tell the goalkeeper, uh, you know, uh, that, you know, Hey, you know, um, 
I can't punt the ball. Should I practice punting? Should I not practice punting? It's like, what do you, what do you, what do you do? I think you have to continue to work on it. You have to constantly work on it all the time, even if it's on your own. Because yep. at the end of the day, maybe it's a U14, a U15. It doesn't matter what team you're playing on, that that's their style of play. That's not the last team you're ever going to be on. You're going to be on another team. And what if all of a sudden that college maybe that you want to play out has a little bit different style of play? If you've only ever played one style all the time, you might limit the opportunities of where you can play down the road. So you, it's just going to be you. You're going to have to constantly work on your goal kicks. You know, you're going to have to constantly, you know, work working on those longer balls and behind the back four. You know, those little textured layered balls, you know, into the maybe the, the outside channels, things like that. Yeah, you might not utilize them in your your games because of the style of play that your coach is dictating. But you need to have those tools in that toolbox just for a rainy day when you need them or that next team that you might potentially or be looking to potentially play on. 100 percent. Awesome. Great. So I hope this helped. Uh, you know who asked this question, so I hope this was a value and it was helpful. Um, let's take one more, one more question. Uh, we have three, but I'll just take one more, and then I'll I'll, I'll keep adding these to the future episodes. Um, so I have two goalkeepers, one eighth grader and a freshman in college. When there's a free kick outside the box, both my boys are almost clueless in how to set a wall. Shouldn't they have had training on this at the youth level? And shouldn't they have some training on this at the collegiate level? <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> so, and that's, that's something that often gets overlooked. It, it truly does. But when you look at the higher levels of the game, where are most goals scored? Games are won and lost off of restarts that piece they just truly are if you don't believe me go back to any world cup go watch where the majority of the goals are scored and a lot of them are scored from restarts whether it's a corner whether it's a free kick whatever we have to have that ability to be able to set it up now with saying that if it's a 10 year old kid versus a freshman in college yeah i'm, I'm gonna hope that that 10 year old is gonna try to set it up but my expectation is right they're not gonna have the ability to set it up as quickly, as organized, as detailed as maybe that freshman in college. I'm going to ask, but but then it's it's understanding, okay, what level is that individual player and that goalkeeper? What can they comprehend? How much of the game do they really understand at the particular levels? And then trying to plug in those pieces based on that level that they're currently at. You know, it could be for that younger goalkeeper, hey, in these areas, just ask for three people, four people, whatever you want, numbers you want on the wall. And that's it. Not worry about anything else. Just call the numbers out. Right. And if it gets organized, it gets organized. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But at that really, really young age, if you're just good enough of just calling out the numbers you want in the wall, then that next year, maybe we have you shout the number and start to get you organizing a little bit. And then incrementally, we start getting a little bit more detailed as the older they get. But to answer the question, yeah, the, those conversations should be had by their goalkeeper coach at the club or high school or whatever, of least the basics of how to set up a wall, how to set up a restart, how to set up on a corner. You know, do you want people on your, and those are discussions that I think you need to have. And the higher levels you go, you're going to start to ask the goalkeeper, what are they comfortable with? You know, every goalkeeper I work with, with the pro pro level. Yeah. I might say, I want it set up like this. But what if that goalkeeper is not comfortable? At the end of the day, they're playing, not me. Right. So I want that feedback of what are you comfortable with? Do you want somebody in your post? Do you want somebody? How many people do you want in your wall in this situation? Um, so but those are has, all conversations. It has to be. It has to be rehearsed. It has to be mm -hmm. taught. It has to have rep. It has to have repetitions, right? In order for it to yeah, become. And, and if you're not getting it, you have to ask for it. Yeah. You, know, you truly have to ask for it. And, and I, I feel for anybody that's out there that they're in situations where they're not getting it. Uh, and especially in those environments where you're probably paying a lot of money at some of the clubs and you're not getting that. It's it's a disservice to you um, that I think you need to you know start asking, whether it's the head coach or the goalkeeper coach. Hey, in these situations, what do I do? You know, yeah, we, you, you, you need to have at least the, the bare bones basics. 
Yeah, we do uh, training starting at the U10 with, with uh, again, just the expectations of every age level. What do I expect? And introduction to that and how they execute, obviously, repetition, repetition. And it's amazing how, you know, you'll see it in youth and even at the high school. And, uh, you know, the wall was in error or something went wrong. They all and the, and the coach will yell at the at the uh, at the goalkeeper. And my first question is. Did you run this scenario at all at practice or did you just assume that it was just going to be perfect without running the scenario over and over again? So when it does happen, the right tools come out of the toolbox. So I'm actually going to create something. Um, where the youth goalkeepers, they have 10 seconds to execute at least some of the important principles. And at the high school and above, they have eight seconds to, to automatically set up their wall to their liking, to their, you know, what they're comfortable with, um, that are constant. There are certain things that are constant. There are certain things that are variables. And, but the constants need to be happen within a certain period of time. And if it's not rehearsed, you just can't expect that to happen. You know, actually, uh, uh, inside the 18, uh, Michael Madgett, Saskia Weber, and um, Omar Zini, uh, uh, a great podcast. Um, they, uh, Stan Anderson actually did just recently uh, talked about set pieces, free kicks, setting up a wall, and all that stuff. How many, you know, it, it so the information there's information is out there if you're not getting it at the club, okay. And if you're not, reach out to me. I can direct you to where there's info. There's a lots of information. I'm sure Todd, you have some information and some some training or some advice or some guidance, and people can reach out to Todd as well um, on this. And and that's really what we're here for. If, if if you're not getting it, how can we still help you, right? Through the resources and the guidance, so you can add that tool in your toolbox, whether you're getting it from your club or not. And, well, and, and I think that that's an important one as well, because I think people would be amazed of how tight this goalkeeping community really is uh, and how much we are truly trying to develop goalkeepers. We don't care who they are. We just want to develop goalkeepers. Yeah. And, you know, the Stan Anderson's, the Omar Zini's, myself, you know, the Chris Sharps of the world, yourself, that if you picked up the phone and called any one of these or got an email and zipped them off and had a question. I can almost guarantee you every single one is going to respond to you. Yep. And I know sometimes you think, oh, it's an MLS goalkeeper coach. Uh, I, they're never going to respond. Uh, I think you might be surprised at, at how much you do get back because we do, especially, you know, us is, I, I want American goalkeeping to be the best goalkeeping in the world. I want us to be the goalkeeping nation, you know, and I think, um, uh, we have every means we possibly can to do that. We just need a little bit of guidance and a little bit of sharing and things like that. And we can get there. So oh, I, you, just, you're, you talked about a topic that's just so just, oh, every cell of my body is like lit up when you say we should have the best goalkeepers in the world here. We should be. USA. We should be. No and and I'll country. tell you what, we have some very, very good goalkeeper, co American goalkeeper coaches in this country. We truly, truly do. There are, and the list can go on and on, uh, that there are some really, really high quality goalkeeper coaches in this country that do a fantastic job. You know, the, the, the Stan Anderson's, the Rob Artusians, you know, at NYCFC and, and I could, you know, uh, John Bush, you know, he's does a great job in Indiana with, he's got a whole academy, you know, you're, yourself, there's Ian Foyer in California, you know, Omar Zin, there's so many that yeah. are right here in this country that we're all in the same boat. And I, I have conversations with almost all of them all the time. And all we want to all talk about is we want American goalkeeping to be the go-to nation in the world. Yep. And I think we, we should be able to do it. I think we definitely have the means to do it. Uh, and I think if you reach out to any of these you know, names I ever, ever mentioned, they would be happy to help. They truly would. So Todd, spot on. We are one hour into our podcast. Um, it's really great. It's an honor to have you here. Uh, and, and I sincerely mean that, you know, your, uh, your time is valuable. And I know you're doing some great things with your camps and stuff. I kind of put down here on the ticker, your website. Uh, tell us what do you got going on? Do you have any camps? What programs do you have? If people want to reach out to you and add a tool to their toolbox with what you offer, what, what could you offer some of the goalkeepers out there in the youth? 
Yeah, if anybody has any questions about goalkeeping, you know, feel free. My website's one on one goalkeeping.com. Uh, I've done clinics and camps all around the country for the last 28 plus years. Um, and I don't have, unfortunately, with the pandemic, I haven't had our number one program, which is our overnight program, haven't had that in the last two years. But I'm hope I'm hopeful that in 2022 we'll be able to you know bring that back. Uh, probably not to the level that we used to have it where we were all over the country. Um, but I'll probably have one or two select locations. And then the one thing that's been really popular the last year and a half has been our virtual goalkeeper. Uh, so that's like a mentorship type of program, and we meet every week, uh, once a week, with video calls just like this. And it's more of the behind the scenes, the teaching, the the tactical pieces video analysis breaking down i was on right before i came on with one of the goalkeepers in our program and we were looking at his last two or three playoff games you know and analyzing and breaking it down and that's kind of what that program's all about so and, and i i truly love that program it's it's a i only have about 15 players from across the country uh i think i'll bring it to about 25 but that's about my cutoff uh and it's been a a, a fun fun ride and uh the, the players are you know, have the freedom to give me a call, shoot me a text, whatever, at any time to go over anything, talk and talk about the college game, how to, you know, put together a resume. It's pretty much the sky's the limit. And it's it's a lot of fun. That's awesome. Well, we need that. That's awesome. Uh, once again, thank you so much for joining us, Todd. Guys, uh, visit the website. Um, uh, it's a great first episode. I'm excited. Uh, I know I'm going to have you back for future episodes. Um, and so guys, this is a wrap up with our first episode, everything GK. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye, everyone.